All right, here we go. Oh, the answers were on the back. Questions. Was there a typo on number four? Let's see, on number four, what's the first thing we should do? Get rid of nine. So we're going to subtract nine from both sides. 33 minus nine is 24. Then we need to divide both sides by? Uh, 24 divided by negative 2 is? I flip it over the back and it says the answer number 4 is negative 12. So that is correct. 24 divided by negative 12. Negative 2 would be negative 12. I got all, right. all right. Any questions? Hey, here's the issue. For the rest of the chapter, we're switching gears big time. Big time. Switching gears. We go from algebra to geometry seemingly very quickly. Uh, we're coming back to this on the chapter test. The chapter test is after CMAS. Six days between, uh, well, six class periods uh, between when we stop doing um, uh, work and we pick up for the chapter test. And oh, by the way, we don't do CMAS until next Wednesday is when we start reviewing for it. So this is a huge break between add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And when you have to take your test, we can forget this very quickly. The keys to doing well on this, both for solving equations and abstract, multiply, and divide, is for those of you that don't have the rules already memorized, and most of you don't, is on a resource card on the top of your paper, you have the two rules, one for multiplication division, one for adding subtracting. That's how you make it through. Uh, on the test I give you, I will give you nice, friendly numbers, like on this right here. doesn't matter if they're friendly or not friendly. If you don't know what you're doing, Easy to make mistakes, right? When you're first learning this stuff, it's easy to make mistakes. That's just how it goes. Key to not making those mistakes is a little bit of practice. And for those of you that need it, have the rules in front of your face and follow them. That script or that verbal uh, uh, set, uh, the verbal uh, script that you heard me say to you each and every time, hey, same or different signs or whatever it was. That's what should be going on through your head every single time you do these problems. All right. Um, correct. Big time switching gears. Big time switching gears. All right. So looking at the calendar real quick, like I said, we're going to finish the chapter on Tuesday. And then we are moving into CMAS mode. CMAS, it's going to take six days, three days of prep, and then three days to take the test. And then we will come back and take our chapter 11 test. Yes, we're going to need two days of review because you guys will forget some things. Point being is that since we're switching gears today, including the weekends, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, we have 14 days of two solid weeks of not doing abstract, multiply, and divide with positive and negative numbers. That is a lot. It's just the way it ends up being with CMAS. All right. Copy down your homework. It is from the book. The question will come up, do I need graph paper? For those of you that are neat, no, you don't need graph paper. In fact, most high school students do this without graph paper. Some students, myself included, are very sloppy. I can't even draw straight lines if I even tried. Right? I would need a ruler to draw a straight line. If you are a sloppy person, you need graph paper. Graph paper is not a requirement. right? I mean, I mean like it, uh, it was a requirement for your packing list for school. But I'm saying you don't have to have graphing paper to do what we're about to do. Okay? We'll talk about how to do it by hand at the end of class. Okay. Say again. I can't hear what you're saying. I'm not changing anything. Thank you. Uh, you turning your stuff? Did you hear? 
Yes. Why don't you go outside the water fountain? All right. Um, lost my train of thought. I'll get back. Thinking, thinking. We'll just sit here and talk while you do that. No. Yeah. Um, okay. Here's the deal. The thing I'm about to teach you, you will do between now and whenever, whatever the last math course you ever take. Just like adding, subtract, multiply, and divide, neg, positive, negative numbers. The thing you're about to do, you do almost every single day in every single math course from now on. It's slightly exaggerating because in eighth grade, you don't do it every day. But in algebra one, every day. Geometry, every day. Algebra two, every day. Pre-calculus, every day. Calculus, every day. Whatever other math courses you take, every day, you will do this, what we're about to do. Okay? Uh, is it hard? No. It is ridiculously easy. Ridiculously easy. There's nothing challenging what we're about to do. Do kids make mistakes on it? All the time. It's not the number one mistake. Number one mistake is dropping the negative. But graphing points incorrectly is a huge mistake made by most students at some point or the other. It is a ridiculously easy skill. I will point out where the mistakes occur. All right. Good news is we're learning something simple for a change. All right, here we go. It started off, mathematically speaking, with uh, caveman, cavewoman, right? They came up with numbers, okay? Uh, that progressed over thousands and thousands and thousands of years through the Greeks, right? Huge in the math world, uh, all the way up to mm, about 15, 1600. It turns out that between the caveman, cavewoman, 15, 1600, nobody knew how to do what I'm about to teach you. It was a huge thing. What? Okay, we'll, we'll get there. Don't worry about it. Um, it was a huge monumental leap forward in math. What well, you're about to learn, which seems silly, that it took so long for someone to come up with this idea. You had two branches of mathematics. You had algebra, right? Algebra is what we've been doing. Hey, you did that last night for homework. And we had geometry, shapes. Turns out until about 15, 1600, nobody thought the two were linked together. It turns out they are. In fact, from uh, uh, pre-algebra all the way on up, upwards, you find out that algebra and geometry come together very, very easily. There was one dude that figured this all out. And he asked himself one question. Where am I? Right? Where are you is a, uh, well, it seems like a, sil a silly question, but mathematically it was a very deep question. Where am I? How do you describe where am I to someone who doesn't know where they are or to someone that's not from this area? Where am I? Well, he solved this problem. His name was Rene Descartes. Um, and uh, he did it in his lifetime, so somewhere between the, fifth, uh, the, the 16th and 17th century, so uh, late 1500s, early 1600s. He figured this out. He joined the two branches of math, algebra and geometry, put them together like that, uh, to the benefit or to the, uh, uh, the, the harm of every single uh, high school student for the rest of, uh, uh, rest of eternity, he joined the two together. Nice thing is that uh, the first thing we're going to learn about this is it's very simple. All right. He answered the question, where am I? Mathematically, where am I? He did it with this thing right here. It's actually named after him. Uh, this is not called the coordinate plane. It's called the Cartesian plane. His name is Rene De. De just means from or of. Cart, right? So it's called the Cartesian plane. All right. This thing right here answers the question, where am I? Mathematically, where am I? I'm in a classroom, but where am I? Can I reproduce that? Believe it or not, the reason why you have pictures on your cell phone is because of that dude right there. Well, that dude right there. The reason why you can draw things on this, I don't mean literally draw, but I'm saying the, the programmer can program pictures. I have a picture of my dog on this right now. The reason why that's there is because of that guy right there. He's responsible for cell phones in the sense of screens. He didn't come up with the screen. He came up with the math behind how you can draw things on screens. Because it doesn't matter how many times I turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. My dog's face is right there. Every single time in the same place. 
I answer the question, where is the dog on my screen? It's right there. It doesn't move around. It's right there every single time. He's the guy responsible. He's responsible for video games. He's my personal hero because of video games, right? Without him, no video games, okay? This was his invention, right? And you will be dealing with this in every single math course between now and when you stop taking math, right? You won't do it every single day in pre-algebra, but nearly every day in geometry, nearly every day in algebra, and then pre-calculus, algebra two, calculus, it's every day. You deal with this thing right here. It's a very easy thing to wrap your head around. Today is going to be a nice, easy day, but boy, is it deep, right? It answers the question, where am I? Hey, where am I? I'm right there. That red dot is a location in space. In geometry, we call this red circle right here a... Point. We call it a point. And remember from geometry uh, chapter, we said a point has no size. Okay, I drew a big, a large, but it technically doesn't have any, any size. We talk about a location of space, we're literally talking about space and outer space, but it's the space that we live in. When you answer the question, where am I? You're saying, what point does my body, where does it live right now at this one particular time? This is a simplified version. When you get to high school, you learn a more complicated version. That's an actual 3D, right? 3D, the other part comes out like this, right? So this can be extended into the 3D world. At least in high school, you'll get to see a little bit of that. But for the most part, we deal with the 2D world here. Everything that he made is in relationship to the center of this thing that I haven't given you the formal name of. I call it the Cartesian plane, okay? Everything is in relationship to the center. You better start writing some stuff down. Box one, write down, please. Aww. A lot of words. That's all you got to write in box one. Pierce called it the coordinate plane. Okay? Because too many people can't spell Cartesian. So it's called the coordinate plane. It's two-dimensional, and I just said it can be three-dimensional high school. But for this year and next year, it will be two dimensions. And in freshman year, you don't get three dimensions until senior year. Um, coordinate plane, it's two dimensional. That means left, right, up, and down. It's two dimensional plane. Plane is just another word for a flat surface. So it's flat. Two dimensional plane formed by the intersection of a vertical number line and a horizontal number line. So there's two number lines. Kindergarten all the way through sixth grade, you get one number line. It goes left and right. Now we get two of them. One goes left and right, horizontal. One goes up and down, vertical. The vertical number line is called, this is the hardest thing for seventh graders, it's called the y-axis. The horizontal is called the x-axis. I remember learning this in seventh, sixth and seventh grade, and it was like, boy, did I mix those two up all the time. There's lots of ways to remember it. Uh, the way, easiest way to remember it, it goes alphabetically X, Y. If you're an air plane, the plane has to go down the runway first before it takes off. So X is horizontal, Y is vertical. Yeah. Uh, 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 right. Now put your mask on. Josh, put your mask on. Put your mask on. Abby. All right. Now, the two number lines are perpendicular to each other. They form right angles. Okay. They intersect each other where both number lines have a zero. So a horizontal number line, you, you know what that looks like. There's a zero on it. There's a vertical number line. It also has a zero. You put the two zeros together, it makes a big plus symbol. That's what we call the coordinate plane. Looks like that. The number one mistake is kids can't remember which one is X and which one is Y. Airplane. A plane goes down the runway, that's the X part, and then it takes off. If you think of it uh, uh, alphabetically, X comes before Y. Yeah. Whenever you have like your two numbers, the first number will always goes alphabetically. We'll talk about that in a second. We okay? Everybody has this written down? All right, we're going to label the parts of the coordinate plane. Technically, it's called the Cartesian coordinate plane. Because it's named after Rene Descartes. Uh, French guy, 
Uh, he's a, it was a philosopher. He was a mathematician. He uh, came up with a very famous expression. You may or may not have heard it. Uh, it, it, it it's called, uh, I don't forget the Latin, but it's, uh, I think, therefore I am. You might hear that occasionally in life. All right. So here is the coordinate plane. Look at the board. It starts with a horizontal number line. It's literally a number line that goes horizontally. Zero is smack dab here in the middle. To this, we add a second number line. We add a vertical number line. The horizontal one is called X. The vertical one also has a zero. Positive numbers are above, negative numbers are below. It makes sense, All right? If you think about it as a thermometer or sea level, right? Above the sea, below the sea, it makes sense that the positive numbers will go above. The two zeros come together at, well, at zero, okay? Further, and this is the part you do not have to ever do. Are you listening? Seventh graders can't figure this out, some of them. They think because they see what a coordinate plane really looks like. It's got all those lines, and they think they have to draw all those lines. You don't draw all those lines when you're doing it by hand. If you're given a coordinate plane, yeah, they're going to fill that sucker in. It's going to look like that. But when you are doing it by hand, when you're doing it by hand, that is what your coordinate plane looks like. It's a big, big honking plus symbol. Label your X's and Y's so you don't make a mistake. You're doing it on a graph paper? Well, it's already got the lines on it. Okay? I don't need all these individual lines when I'm doing it by hand. That's all I need. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to label the parts of it. First and foremost, label the X axis as the X axis. Get used to finding the X axis first. It's always the first thing you're going to find. So you get the high High school occasionally use the Y first. If that's the X axis, then the other one is y. label it. Anybody know what the third one is called? W. Z. It is called the Z axis. Oh, I I just just and then to further confuse you, we flip everything around. If you ever, if you're like, oh, I'm interested in that, and I Google it, turns out that's not the Z axis. They relabel it. We'll wait for high school to explain why. Explain to us now. We're really no, it's too much of an explanation. No, we're, we're really smart. The big honking center where the two zeros come together has a name. Anybody remember the name? The, the middle. The middle. Uh, the middle would be a good name for it. We call it where the two number lines begin. Therefore, we call it Starting the line. beginning. No. We call it the origin. The origin. You should. Just great when you're first introduced to this. Yes. Say again. A pencil. All right. Okay. Does everybody have this written down? Okay. So there are a couple reasons I want you to write these all down of why we use this. Well, I told you once how we get video games, believe it or not. But it's how you get screens. You have to draw things when you have a visualization. And the coordinate plane allows us to place geometric shapes on a flat plane, and that would be your screen. Okay? There's plenty of other uses. You'll, you'll, you'll see them as we get into higher level math. One of the primary ones is it allows you to draw things. And I don't mean like, oh, look at the pretty picture. It means now that you draw the pretty picture, you can encode that pretty picture now mathematically, because every part of the picture is a point. And you can say, hey, the little red dot right here has these numbers. Little blue dot has these numbers. Put all those dots together, you make a nice pretty picture. You can write that mathematically. And that is how your cell phone, the PlayStation, the Xbox, your television all reproduces shapes. All right, write this down. First off, <clears throat> the first reason why we do this, it, it visually allows us to visually understand the relationship between shapes. <clears throat> I can talk to I'm blue in the face about triangles parallelograms and trapezoids. Those are words that are describing physical objects, shapes. What the coordinate plane allows us to do is to draw those. So that now instead of me using words to describe, hey, one is above the other and it's two thirds away from the other, I can now draw that and visually represent what it looks like. We are a visual species. We like to look at things. 
many times it's easier for us to interpret things using our eyeballs. And I'm going to say than our brains, but you kind of understand what I mean. Eyeballs do these brains. But it's easier. Oh, look at the two shapes. I can figure something out because I'm looking at them. Or I can tell you what their formulas are. And then it becomes a little bit harder to interpret. Okay? Yes. The second one. It literally takes shapes and converts them into equations. Okay? When we throw it on a graph, it gives us the ability to convert those shapes into equations and then take those equations and reproduce them on anyone's graph. This is the reproducibility of That's like I said, why every time I turn on my cell phone, I get the same darn picture. Because there's an equation inside of my cell phone for the picture that I have on the screen. Literally, there's an equation. Or there's data, I should say, more, more appropriately. But the data is mathematical data. Lines have equations. There are equations of circles. There are equations that represent rectangles. There's equations that represent smiles. There's equations that represents the shape of a heart. Oh, yeah. I have a question. All right. Okay, about this. So Hold, it. Make it Hold it. All right. One thing, and I said uh, it kind of goes with the, the first one, is it allows us to measure things very easy. You're placing a shape onto a grid that has numbers which allows you to very quickly measure. I just gotta look at it, count squares. Hey, it's four squares wide, two squares high. I can calculate the area if it's a rectangle very quickly because it's already on a grid system. These three things, these three things are the main reasons, at least in seventh grade, why we throw things on a coordinate plane. You get lots of questions from now on. They'll throw the two shapes or three shapes or four shapes on a graph and ask you questions about it. They're asking you to visually look at it and ascertain some facts about it. We will be able to draw those shapes because I will teach you or, or your future math teachers will teach you uh, what are the equations for those shapes. Uh, you won't learn the, the, the formula for the circle until sophomore year uh, high school. But there's a formula to draw circles. Okay. Uh, lastly, uh, or, and then uh, we, we this year we will draw lines. That's kind of the shape that we do on the graph. We will draw lines. But I'm going to give you the equation of the line. You're going to take that equation and be able to graph that line. You will convert it from numbers and variables to a shape. You will always measure things. All right, uh, the, we will do only one shape today, and that is a point. Technically, a point isn't a shape. It is a location in space. Remember, points have no shape, right? We yes, we shape. like to put dots to represent them. We can put triangles. We can make a shape. Out we can make a shape out of a collection of points. Uh, all shapes are made up of a collection of points, an infinite collection of points. Connecting the dots. Okay. Connecting the dots. All right, so all we're doing today is we're graphing points. Does that make sense? Like I said, the homework might be a slightly confusion. Hopefully you remember what I said. All right, box four, write this down. Hey, you already got something there. Guess what you got there in box four? Uh, um, a point. You have a point. I said, we're gonna take equations or symbols that represent a shape and we graph it. What you see right there in front of you is the representation with numbers and letters of what points will look like from now on. You'll become very com comfortable with this representation of a point. Like, well, that doesn't look like a point. It looks like a letter, two parentheses, and two numbers. Well, that's a point. So this thing right here, anybody know what it's called? I just said it's a point, but it's actually called a? No. It is a point, by the way. This thing right here, 
uh, italicized uppercase letter. Remember what points are named after uh, uppercase letters. Two parentheses and a comma and two numbers. This is called a, all right, write this down. This is called an ordered pair, an ordered pair. Oh, by the way, it is a point. It's a numerical way to represent a point in space. Our goal today is to take a graphical representation or a numerical representation of a point and graph it on a coordinate plane. That starts with having its way it's represented with numbers and letters. This is how it's done. This is a point. This is one point. It will always be a capital letter. It will always be italicized. It will always be two parentheses. It will always be a comma. It's called an ordered pair because these numbers are in a specific order. And no, it's not least the greatest. They're in a specific order. Go ahead. So the first number is in you place all the x axis. The first number, and it's ordered pair because there's two numbers. If it was in three dimensions, there would be three, three numbers. You'll see that in high school. All right, ordered pairs, ordered pairs. It's the specific order. The first number is how far you are left or right. We call that the horizontal or the x axis. Capital letter A is the name of the point. This is point A. The first number will be how far you are left or right. Hey, a number line, where, where are the positive numbers? They're usually- Where are the positive numbers? Where are they always? Right. They're always to the right. Where are the negative numbers? Always to the left. Always to the left. These numbers are not in an ordered in sense of least to greatest. They're always in an X. And the second number is- Y. How far you are up or down? Where are the positive numbers? They're usually up. They're always above. The negative numbers are yeah. always below, okay? So X, Y. And it's alphabetical. Life is nice, right? It is alphabetical. The number one mistake students make is they forget it goes X, Y. They think it might go Y, X. It always goes X, Y. Yes. Can't you map props only with three dimensional coordinate planes? Say again? Can't you map probability with something similar? Can't you map probability? I don't know. I'm not sure about that. But you can certainly map three dimensional shapes, right? Okay, then. All right. So the preparations, I will, tonight for homework, we'll do two things. I'll ask you to graph points, and I'll give you a graph of points, and you have to write their ordered pair. So two things. The preparations for the first thing, which is to graph a point, are as follows. Always, always, always label. I don't care what grade you're in, college or high school or middle school, you're going to label. Don't skip this step. It takes one second. Label it. I will give you a point and I'll say graph it. Your first step will be to label. label. How are you going to label it? Well, with a capital letter. I'm going to label it X, Y. Always do this. Don't skip that step. And the reason is this is the number one mistake kids make when they're graphing. X, Y. That is your labeling. Okay. That's half of your legs. Okay. If I give you a point and ask you to graph it, the first thing you're going to do is label, label it. it X comma Y. Trust me when I say some of you will make mistakes on this, not the labeling, but you'll forget the label and then you'll do it backwards. And I'll say, why did you do it backwards? You're like, I don't know. I know why you didn't label it. You didn't look at the label. X is how far you are left and right. Y is how far you are up and down. Okay, labeling is always your first step. Here's how it's done. You ready? I got to give you a point, right? Tonight for homework, they will not give you a graph. You will have to draw your own graph or use graph paper. Do not, do not, do not, do not draw all of these lines. What are you going to do when you do it by hand? Get a big honk and plus. And try, unlike me, to draw straight lines. This is why I use graph paper because I can't draw straight lines without a ruler or straight edge. X, Y. Okay, let's see how it's done on a coordinate plane. I, I, you'll see how, how I show you to do it by hand here in a second. Okay, here we go. Two, five. What's the first step? You label it. I label X, Y. Okay. The first number is how far you are. Left, right. All right, now you got to listen. Are you listening? You do not count the first square. 
And by square, I'm talking about these tick marks. You do not count the first one because the first one is zero. zero. You don't count zero. We need to count how far over? Two. We need to count two over. Well, think of a number line. You count one, two. Well, you're actually at what number? One. You're not at two. You're at one. So do not count the first. That's horrible. Do not count the first one. Now, I'm going to show you dots. All I'm doing is showing you that I'm counting tick marks. By tick marks, I mean on the number line, I'm only thinking left and right. There's lots of tick marks up there. I'm only thinking left and right. So I'm going to count two over. I'm going to show you counting. One, two. You see I counted two over? Yeah. That also corresponds with the number two. So right now I'm at this second red dot. I just went two over to the right. What do I got to do now? Daddy has to go up and down. I got to go straight up. How many? Five. If that was a negative five, I would have to go down. go down five. You count the first square that you're on. No. I don't because that's zero. So you said go up five. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Now, is yours going to have all these dots on it? No. You're just going to touch it with your pencil tip. The last one that you wound up on is the final answer. Oh. That is Maybe. two five, except we've got to do one last thing. You have to label it. We've got to label it. What's the name of this point? A. So we label it A and we're done. A. Yes. What do you mean dash all the numbers? So like right there it has like one two. On the homework, if you're doing this without graph paper, watch me. Step number one, you've got to be neat. If you're not neat, get graph paper. If you are neat and you know you're neat and everyone talks about how neat you are, what you don't do is what? I used a ruler. What are don't you do about? this. It's not because it's wrong. It's just perfectly right. Oh. It will take you 20 minutes to do one problem. You don't need to do this. Watch what I do. What's the first number? Uh, two. So I need to go which direction? Right. How many? Two. Watch me. I got to be neat, though, and I'm not neat. So I count over two tick marks that are equally spaced. One, two. You see what I did? Well, now I'm right here. Now what do I do? How many? They have to be in the same spaces. I have to be neat, and I'm not a neat person. So I'm always going to use graph. I got to look. How many? Five. One, two, three, four, five. Where these two intersect, can you see it? Yep. Don't draw the dotted dash. Right here is where two five is. Do you see what I did? Am I neat? Heck no, I'm not neat. I'm sloppy. Right? I guess I'm trying to say most of you probably need to use graph paper. Yeah. Graph paper will make it easier. The other question that's going to come up with is what uh, he's, Ace is doing right now is how many questions can you put on one graph? Five. There isn't a, a good answer to that other than just don't make it sloppy. You can fit all 10 questions on one graph. I guess you can put all 10 questions on one graph. There's not a good answer to how many can I put on one graph. You can't read what you did. If you got dots on top of dots, then you need to put them on separate graphs. Okay. That's my plan to do. I know you were supposed to, you're saying something. I'm not sure what you're saying. Sorry. You can put like infinite amount of dots. You can, but if there's another point that's also at two five, then uh, it's messy. You can label books. Okay. I'm just saying, use some common sense. If you think it's getting too messy, use a separate graph. All right, who's confused? Good. Speeding things up. What's the first step? I label X, Y, and I was always X, Y, Lily. The first one is what? Left and right or up and down? Okay. Okay, so on your paper, you need to have, Lily, something that tells you that X goes left and right. Y goes up and down. Seventh grade is when you figure this out. Some of you do have already figured out, but others of you don't. Seventh grade is when you actually do graphing for the first time and you're held accountable for it. Sixth grade, you kind of get introduced to it. Seventh grade, you got to do it. Okay. This will be on, you know, CMAS, right? They'll ask you to graph something. 
wonderful if right. you get the math. Correct. And which you don't this year. So. Oh, thank God. Ooh. But eighth grade, absolutely. I mean, oh. if I show you the eighth grade practice test, it's, it's a whole bunch of this. All right, here we go. Lily, which direction are we going? Down. No, I'll left or right. Okay, and then how many spaces and how, which direction? So which direction we're going to go? Left. How many, how many tick marks? One. So I go to the left one. By the way, guess what number you're actually going to on the left? Zero. I am literally going to negative one on the number line. Do you see it? If I go one tick mark to the left, I'm at negative one on the number line. Can you see that? Yes. Are you going to put a dot here? No. You're going to take your pencil, pen, or whatever, and put it right there. Now I'm right there. Now what do I do, Lily? I go up three. One, two, three. Let me catch up. And I wind up right there. Now I put dots. That's just me representing me touching that. Remember, you don't touch zero to start with. After you go left and right, you don't touch it again to go up and down. You go to the next square, either one up or one down, depending on whether you're going to positive or negative. That last blue dot there represents my final location, and I label, and I'm done. Some kids will do one graph per problem. I would say that's probably a little bit excessive, right? Some kids might do two or three. That's probably okay. Some kids will try to squeeze all the questions. How many questions? Uh, ten of them. Ten of them on one graph? I think they probably could do that. But it's uh, yeah. all of them are smaller than a, a five. They're not, they're not next graph. to each other, right? Yeah, okay. and they're all smaller than the five by five graphs. Okay. So he's saying the farthest you go left or right, up and down is five. Okay. I put, I put it all right, let's do one. Here we go. Box number five. Quickly, quickly, quickly. C is at three, four. Where do we always start? X, X. We start at the zero, the origin. The first number which we label, X, Y, is how far you are left or right. Josh, are we going left or right or for the X axis? We are going to the right how many? We go to the right three. One, two, three. Remember those red dots represent you touching with your pen or pencil. Jaden, now where are we going? Up. How many? Four. We're going up four. So one, two, three, four. That last dot right there represents where I'm at. Last step. And you are done. Questions? All right. Remember I said today was an easy day. It's an easy day. All right. If you're going to make a mistake, it's when you have negatives. Don't lose your brain. Remember, there's two axes there, the X and the Y. Okay. Positive on the X axis means you're going right. Positive on the Y axis means you're going up. Negative on the X axis means you're going left. Negative on the Y axis means you're going down. We start at the origin. Riley, talk me through. Which direction? X is what? Left, right, or up and down? Okay, so from the origin I go two to the right, one, two. Okay, keep talking. So my pencil right now is right here on two. And I, do I count the first one? I don't. I count one, two, three, four. Notice I'm counting positive, but I'm actually going in a negative direction because this tells you how many tick marks or squares you're going down. The labeling tells you which direction, up, down, left, or right. And the positive or negative number tells you on the x-axis, go right if it's positive, left if it's negative. On the y-axis, positive up, negative down. Oh, let me catch up, four. That last dot there is, represents where your pencil winds up. You put a big honking dot there and you label it B. <laughs> and we're done. Hey, where does the label have to go? Around. Anywhere next to the dot. It doesn't have to go on the upper left. It can go anywhere. In fact, it can even go right here as long as, look on the board. It's around the dot. As long as there's something to indicate that that's D. You won't see it this year, probably, but you will see it in high school. 
Sometimes they don't have space to put the label next to it. So the label will be somewhere on the paper and a big honking arrow pointing to it. Okay. Questions? All right, do box seven. About 20 seconds. So how long it should take you? Yes. Uh, one of them. My voice is really Jasmine. Sure. How you doing? Are you done? Yes. Okay. Sit quiet. Anybody need help? Anybody I'm lost? I don't know what I'm doing. The number one mistakes are they count the square that they start on instead of the next one. And by square, they got to be careful. I'm really talking about the, the marks on the number line. I call them tick marks. Yes. We're, yeah, we're going to talk about that next. That's the second biggest mistake. Zeros and negatives are the two biggest mistakes. All right, let's see. One, three. I go X, Y. So I go right one, up three. I wind up right smack there, put a big dot, oh. label it E. Yeah. Okay. I ran out of letters. There's 26. Yeah, and there's 30 letters that I need. No, H. Well, H would be H would be one A. So that way you know what number it is. And A is the first one. Okay. She's claiming that is F. Yes or no? No. Okay. Let's yes. see if it matches where you yep, match where I put it. All right. The last one. We're going to right or left? Uh right. Right how many? Seven. Down and right. down to right there. Questions. <laughs> I can't make this hard because this is not hard. You can make silly mistakes, though. The concept of it is not hard, Gavin. Yes. I truthfully forgot to put that back on. Question? All right. Yes. I do this right, and then one more thing. So I'll look. Do I get the back at the end of the end of the day. All right. There are uh, slightly, this is what Felicity was asking. There are some slightly challenging ones, right? Uh, those are the ones that have a lot of negatives and ones that have zeros. If there's one that people make mistakes on all the time, it's the ones that have zeros. The zeros are the ones you have to be careful with. They're actually the easiest one, yet they're the most missed. So let's look at negatives first, box eight. Uh, we're going left or right, up and down? Left. No, we're going left, down. We're going left, how many? One. We're going up or down? Down. How many? Three. As long as you remember that, it's hard to make a mistake. She said left one, down three. Well, that would be right there. Yay. Uh, also, be careful. You can get a little bit, uh, I don't know, uh, sure of yourself when you're doing this. And you just kind of do it really quickly. Count squares. Count tick marks. Okay. I know that there's numbers here, but especially as you get further away from the two axes, like, I don't know, negative eight, negative seven, way over here somewhere, sometimes it's hard to count the squares. Okay. When they're really close to this, I can literally look at the numbers. Left one, down three. Well, I can see the numbers, literally. Second one, uh, negative two, negative nine, that is? Left two, up nine. Left two, up nine. So I go left two. Straight up to nine, and I put it up. Like I said, I can see the numbers. That one was easy. Okay. It becomes a bit more challenging when uh, farther away from the numbers. I'm, I'm, I'm halfway around the numbers now. What's it say to do? Go five right and go five down. All right, can't have Vea answering all the questions. Please, that's right. what I just said. Five right, five down. Five right would be right here. Five down. Well, now I can't really see the numbers that well. Maybe I count. One, two, three, four, five. And I'll put a dot there. All right. We feeling confident? The next ones are the ones you screw up. And it's simply because, in my experience, as soon as someone sees the zero, instead of labeling, instead of following the directions, they're like, I don't know. I'm just going to put the dot where I think it needs to go. Don't change your procedure. Hey, zero, negative three. It's still X and Y. So how far am I going left or right? Zero. I'm not moving. I'm still on the origin. Go down. 
I'm going down three. So I'm right here. Do you see what I did? Yeah. I didn't go left and right anything. I went left and right zero. So I stayed on zero, but I went down three. On this one, somebody? Oh, sorry. Uh, to the left. Two. I'm going to the left two. How far am I going up or down? Zero. Nothing. I'm not going to move up and down at all. So I'm just going to go left two and stop. On the last one, don't miss this one. You don't go. Where's zero zero? Uh, it's, the, it's literally the origin. Okay. It is literally the origin. Questions? Okay. What do we got left to do? No, what do we got left to do? Well, what procedures wise? What do we got left to do? We just graphed things. Guess what we got left to do? Now I'm going to give you this picture. You're going to. Oh, you're going to write the coordinates. So we're just going to switch the procedure. Uh, uh -huh. All right, we're going to switch the procedure. I'm going to uh, give you a picture of a point. Tonight for homework, they're going to put a bunch of them on a graph. And you're going to have to come up with the ordered pairs. All right, so it's the same procedure, just in reverse. Where do we always start? Uh, X. Where do we always start? At the origin. Remember, it's an ordered pair. The first number is left, right, or up and down? The first number is left, right, or up and down? It's left and right. The second number is up and down. So if I start at the origin, I've got to get to the blue dot here. You see? And you said the first number is what? Left, right, or up and down? So I need to go left or right. Well, what clearly, which direction am I going to go? I'm going to go to right until I'm directly above the point. What's that number right there? Eight. You see it? Yeah. So I went right eight. So there's my first number. Now I'm going up or down? Down. Five. Going down. Five. Well, you can look, rewrite it. Oh, there's no number there. Well, it's, it's five. But be careful. If you went down, that's negative. Right? By the way, it is point W. So I got to label it W. You said I went right eight and I went down five. Just be careful. If you're going to make a mistake, you're going to leave off of a negative. If you go down, negative. If you go left, negative. If you go up, positive. If you go right, positive. You said down five, so I don't put five, put negative five. Who's lost? Okay. Lily, where do I always start? Where? Where do I start? Where on the x-axis? Origin. Okay. I start at the center, the origin. I got to get to that blue dot. Am I going left, right, or up or down? Which one do I do first? Left first. Left is positive or negative. So all I do is look at the number that's, in this case, directly below it. What number is directly below it? Can you see it? Negative. It looks like that. It's negative 7. Okay. So I'm going left 7, but that would be negative. And then are we going up or down, Lily? I'm going up, so I go directly up to whatever that number is. And that number is, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it's fine. Very good. Yep. That's what you have to do. Uh, Ace, how many of those did I give you for homework? Oh, uh, Zero, we think. Yeah. To to I thought out. I gave you one where the points are listed, and you got to come up with coordinates for the class exercise. Okay. All right, so let's do some. Here we go. Box 10, I gave you one, two, three, four, five. The ones that will give you problems are the ones with zeros in it and the ones with negatives. Malachi, pick a letter, any letter. Pick a letter, any letter. Okay, K, give me the coordinates. You said zero, negative nine, yay or nay, class? Yay. Yay. All right, Jasmine, pick a letter. Oh, okay. J, go for it. Negative one. Negative one, four, yay or nay? Yes. Yay, that's good. Keegan, pick a letter. M. M, go. Mike, M. Two, two. Yay. Ballerina, All right. You get it? Ballerina? Nobody? I got it. I just don't want to work. Gavin, pick a letter that we haven't picked. Uh, N. N. 
Nope. Nine negative one. Nine negative one. There are all the points. Very good. Questions? I left out for L. But all right. All right. See you tomorrow. We didn't have I'm up with labels. A, B, C, D. Jaden, Cody. You have a collection going. I do. I'm going to be that tall by the end of the day. He's only got one thing. I got two things. I'll have a full outfit by third period. You're not going to be able to get like underwear, socks, jeans. Yeah, you're right about that. Socks, maybe. You won't be able to get a pair of pants. All right, e-learners, any questions? If you have any questions, send me a chat or email.